Okay? Good afternoon, everyone. Before we start, I'd just like to say a big thank you to James for being a surprise judge, Kate, Ali, and Chris for making their time free to come down here and uh, participate in one of Duncan's uh, mental tasks. Really appreciate it. Also, I'd like to say Luke, fantastic song. I, I, I'm already convinced you've all of that. But, uh, Dan, better look next time. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken a little bit of a different tack, uh, tact on this. So, uh, where these guys have done songs, I also got my idea from YouTube. Um, and I'm going to do a bit of a presentation. So, first of all, this for me has all been about winning the best man competition. Being Duncan's brother, it's really important for me. I've, I've, you know, if you don't get many opportunities in your life to become a best man. And uh, for me, get a tear already. Uh, no, for me, it is an actual goal of mine. So I hope that comes out throughout what I'm saying. So first of all, Chris Twig, for your consideration. That's what this is all about. Thank you to my client. Okay, so over the past 19 months, one week and three days, I've been many things. I've been a sore loser. I'll explain what this is. This is everybody else winning and me losing, which seemed to be the habit for the first three or four rounds. I've also been a gracious winner. Some of you may argue, <laughs> but, but <coughs> at least on one occasion, I've either fist bumped you or shook your hand. It might have just been because I was drunk, I don't know. But, as well as being that, Help. You would have thought that's what you think help. As well as being, being all of those things, I've been drunk. Let's be honest, that's what these 12 rounds are really all about. <laughs> Hands up here who has been to a 12 rounds and hasn't got drunk. <laughs> Mom, we don't believe that for a second. <laughs> Okay, I've also been, sorry, I've been a naked chef, uh, you, you, you may remember that from the actual night, uh, I've also been a flash dancer, it's a shame Tristan's not here because he would have remembered that exact move happening if you would like to just show the judges, sorry, <laughs> okay like that one, <laughs> but, As well as that, I've also been drunk. <laughs> you may see where this is going. I've also been an entrepreneur. A cheated entrepreneur, nonetheless. But, for those that weren't there, we sold cage, we used our entrepreneurial spirit, um, made money, bought more cakes, sold more cakes, and uh, should have won, in all, in all honesty. I've also been a, a pro athlete. You'll notice the ball hasn't actually gone in the net yet, much like on the day when it never actually did. Um, well, I've also been drunk, uh, and that one's a picture of me asleep, leaning against the table, thinking about boobies. <laughs> Which is what 90 of my, 90% uh, of my time is spent doing. But mostly, more than anything else, I have been drunk. And this is me. This wasn't necessarily uh, during the 12 rounds, uh, but one of the times where I got drunk, I actually got cunt written on my forehead. <laughs> and I was passed out. So, none of you guys will be surprised to know that, but for these guys, just paint a little bit of a picture about myself. I'm a lively. Okay, so. That gives you a bit of an overview about the 12 rounds, but what I thought I'd do is give you guys a bit of an overview of the competitors that, have, uh, that you've already seen today. I've also included Bradwell, so uh, that might be down for it, mate. <laughs> Let's start with Dan Chip Pan or Dan the Wanker Shaw. So, to begin, I've drawn, I've drawn a graph basically showing two things. The green line, which represents Dan's success, Meaning, he started off very well, and throughout the whole challenges, it went downhill. Which is why he's not winning anymore. And then the red line uh, shows a lack of effort 
and amount of lateness within Dan Shaw. <laughs> he was also late for the, the suit fitting this afternoon. Didn't even turn up. Hold on, mate. Hold on. <laughs> as well as Dan's lateness in a graph, this is uh, one of the last rounds where this was the game challenge where Duncan told us very clearly, be at the pub for 11 o'clock on the dot. Dan, what time did you get to the pub? I didn't make it. <laughs> Dan didn't make it to the pub because he was hungover in bed with, that's Kaylee. I'm, I'm sure you can see the likeness. <laughs> with his phone ringing in the background. Um, and then when he did actually make it, the quote which Luke's already used was, your idea is fundamentally flawed in every way. <laughs> nice one for turning up, mate. I'm, up. I'm going to move on to Luke Rescue Riddell, who, um, yeah, he's gone up in my estimations even more softly today. But he's also mentioned this on the sports day. <laughs> this is Luke's attempt at the wheelbarrow. So, as everyone else had finished the race, Luke hadn't even made it halfway, and he was trying to crawl along the, on the floor on his arms. And I think it was Scott that shouted out, This good, you're not in the army, use your hands. <laughs> That's my impression of Scott. <laughs> on another note, and I'm probably going to sound quite bitter after mugging off all these people, but one of the challenges that Luke won, I think he's already mentioned it was after a recount, a very, very dodgy recount, I must add. Uh, on the day it was announced that Chris Twig won. You know, wiped the floor with everybody, fair enough. And then Luke, with his little, with his little frown on his face, said, I'm going home. I'll set the money with me then. I'll look after it. And then, this is Luke at home. This is my imagery of what actually happened. <laughs> Putting a £50 note into the bucket and then passed it on to Duncan, who did his recount, and then, oh, I've, I've, I've recounted, and there's an extra 50 pounds in there. I better tell Luke he's won. That definitely happened, by the way. <laughs> then there's Bradwell, who, um, you know, I've, already, I've, I've got so much respect for the guy, you know. Ever since he's been a judge, I've had <laughs> nothing but the utmost respect for him. Um, but I'll do it anyway. Um, basically, this is to depict that Bradwell has had nobody on his team. But on certain occasions, mainly the ones that he's won, is when he's had people from other people's teams on his team. So, fair play to you, man. Also, can anybody tell me what that is before actually? Is it garlic? It's garlic. <laughs> garlic because of when Bradwell did his come dine with me. At the time, I've got to admit, it was a lovely dish. We had garlic bread, we had pasta with garlic in it, uh, we had more garlic. But the next day, I was walking through town, I hadn't had this for a long, long time, where I was walking down the street and people were just pulling faces at me like, it's because I stunk of garlic. Kate won't come near me. It's, well, it was a nice meal, but you've ruined my, uh, my life. <laughs> right, I'll move on to me then. I'm the fourth competitor. You guys might not know, but I'm Duncan's brother. Um, a little bit about myself. I suffer from a condition known as DIN. Has anybody heard of it? It's a very serious condition. It causes me to um, lack concentration at points in my life. And it can be quite, quite bad for me at times. Um, if you don't know it as DIN, you might know it as Drink Induced Narcolepsy. Um, and I'm, and usually when I'm when I'm out doing these sorts of things, I have a tendency to fall asleep while I'm dancing, while I'm against lampposts. You name it, I've probably done it. But one thing I will say is, throughout this whole tap, all these challenges, I've only fallen asleep once, and it actually worked to my advantage. I was there playing poker, cards up, and I thought I was doing a poker face. 
Oh, I stay asleep. Mo for <laughs> life. Um, I've also gone into a bit of detail about the actual concept of 12 rounds. Um, my understanding is, I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it's actually based on a film starring a wrestler called John Cena, where the basic storyline is that John Cena's daughter gets kidnapped, and the people that have kidnapped his daughter say, you can have your daughter back if you pass, pass 12 challenges. I can see it. It just fits so well, doesn't it? Best man, my daughter's been kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> Good logic. <laughs> and throughout this whole process, I've had people coming up to me all the time saying, It's your brother, why didn't he just pick you? <laughs> if you're his brother, if he made me do that, I'd tell him to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you all just not do it? You should be best man anyway. And etc, etc. It was even asked of me on the radio the other day, and I'll be honest, it's a frustrating question because. If any of you know Duncan, you'll realise he's an absolute dick. <laughs> uh, and for the first 18 years of my life, I absolutely hated him. He was the bane of my life. And it's only, only just been over the past 10 years that I've actually started. He's gone from the wanker to all right guy category. Cheers for that. <laughs> but that's why he hasn't picked me straight away. Because I'm sure he had the same hatred for me growing up as I had for him. And if I want to, I can't wait to do a speech about him at his wedding. When I, win. <laughs> I want to go over some high points and low points of this, this whole process. Mainly the high points have been when I've won. So here is a picture of Kate here. Um, for one of the challenges, I told her and her, her other teacher friend that it might be a good idea to uh, do, do a video. Have you, have you seen Celebrity Juice where he does Keith versus Jedward? I was like, let's do Kate versus Beck. You can do some rude challenges. So I made them deep throat uh, a cucumber, like squirt of cream off stuff. It was brilliant. <laughs> and it actually had a no value whatsoever to any of the challenges. It was just for my own amusement. So that was a massive <laughs> high point for me. Um, and it's due on YouTube sometime soon. Uh, creating a new game called Blocks, um, which is a mix of Jenga and Tetris. Uh, and we won that round. And then a few weeks later, or a couple of months later, I actually found out that that game was actually in production from Jenga and from Tetris. I don't know if I've got any money to come in my way, but I should. Um, I've also got Egg and Spoon, because I won the sports day even though I lost the Egg and Spoon race. That was the most pathetic attempt at that whatsoever. And also, also winning the Pug Pluto, I was Chris Reverend Green. But the low points, I had my boss, who told me I'm mint at quizzes, actual quote. I think he got about two questions right. Um, low point was damn winning anything. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, during the pub quiz, one of the questions was who was the bridesmaid or who our Rosie's bridesmaid's gonna be? I was like, oh, you've never told me this. Oh, why would I know any of them? Turns out one of them's my sister. <laughs> that was a massive low point for myself. Uh, and also, a low point was falling asleep whilst playing poker, and nobody actually knowing who they thought I was doing my poker face. But like I said, this whole this whole thing for me has been a really a really important goal in my life. I really want to be my brother's best man, mainly because Luke and Dan are wankers. Um, but and I am in the lead, and I want to keep my lead, and I want to win this thing. But. As these guys have already alluded to, I couldn't have done it without the help of some friends. So I'd like, as I go through this, I'd like you all to pick up your pints or pick up your drinks and give them a cheers. I know they're probably all not here except for Scott. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mum and dad. They raised the right winner. <laughs> I'd like to thank Craig and Martin. They're not here. Um, with the challenges they helped me on, I lost, but still, <laughs> nice one guys on YouTube. Nice one. I'd like to thank Tristan for being the best dance partner a man could have asked for. If he had have done that flip off the floor, I'm, I'm sure I wouldn't even be needing to do this round today. I'd like to thank Simon, whose house I made smell of chips for about three weeks after the event by leaving the deep fat fry going. Neil for being my naked butler, showing everyone his cock, as is pretty standard. Stevie, Old Man River and Mikey for being the best sports day team ever. Born athletes. 
Phil for being shit at quizzes. Nice one, boss. Kizzy and Pete for helping me invent a game that already exists. And my other team, Chris, Hooley, Claire, Scott, Rosie and Kizzy. I've even had the bride to be on my team. That shows the support I've, I've had so far. And also I like to thank Kate, who's actually put up with me throughout the whole thing, even though I've been an absolute shit to her sometimes. But you've helped me out loads, so cheers. I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> um, but this all comes down to my goal of wanting to be my brother's best man. Um, I've probably put myself across as a bit of an arrogant dick, but ultimately it comes from a good place. Um, I love my brother, um, and I, I do want to be there for him on his, on his big day. That's what this is all about. <laughs> so I'd like to thank everyone else for being patient throughout this uh, rather monotonous speech uh, and say Chris Twig for best man. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's Martin Alvin Brown noting the judges at the start, we all noticed that. Um, <laughs> uh, about being a gracious winner, I think that's only been begrud begrudgingly. Uh, I don't think they actually genuinely are gracious in your winning. Um, there was a bit of colourful language, I, but I think that's been pretty standard throughout all the speeches, so you didn't use any marks for that. Um, yeah, excellent confidence all the way through, I thought. Um, some slight stumbling between some of the things, different, trying different ways of pulling the sheets off, but uh, got there at the end. And uh, I thought the presentation format was uh, where well, it was inspired, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, well done. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I think you, you probably, your speech might have been the longest. But it kept me engaged the whole way through. Like, That's what I was going for. You didn't waver <laughs> at all. Um, you were really confident, which is good. And in terms of a best man speech, that's what you want on the actual day. You don't want to be worried about someone being nervous. Um, I think it was really heartfelt. Um, we definitely know Duncan's your brother now. Not that one over to us. Um, and um, your props and your props were good. So whoever did the drawings. You did your own drawings. Oh, well done. Um, and slagging off the competition was a really good idea. Um, <laughs> and gaining sympathy with your illness as well. So yeah, <laughs> dirty tactics. Well done. Um, so yeah, really, really good. Well done. May I recommend using PowerPoint next time? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, exploring the judges is a good idea. Usually. Twenty points. Not in this case. <laughs> there was uh, there was a lot of uh, content to it, so that it was more it was quite engaging. Uh, your delivery is a bit monotonous, though. So if you can work a little bit on getting a little bit more into your voice, a bit more tone, then you're all set to go. Okay. Um, yeah, another top, top speech really, um, all very good, um, it was certainly very sincere and, and warming and heartfelt um, towards your brother, um, certainly putting across the sense that you desperately want to win this, um, again a very confident style, um, good interaction with the, the crowd and the judges, um, again the presentation um, was good, very good artwork on there, um, although it did sort of slow it down a little bit from time to time trying to um, take off the different bits of paper on there but uh, I think uh, sort of that led to some improvisation as well which were, again was uh, was very good um, so yeah very another very good speech thank you